How it's made, microchips. Microchips are everywhere. With the advent of amazing technology comes a greater need for efficient microchips, but they sound minuscule, so if you're wondering about how they are made, we'll discuss that in our video. Welcome back to How It's Made, folks, and today we'll be talking all about microchips. But before we delve into the world of manufacturing, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. What is a microchip? Microchips are a flat silicon disk that has an integrated circuit embedded on it and even incorporates transistors. There are patterns of tiny switches that are created on the silicon wafer by embedding materials to form a deep and integrated lattice of interconnected shapes. There are elaborate processes that lead to the construction of these interconnected circuits and we'll discuss all of them in detail. Raw Material – Silicon Silicon is the digital gold in the technology industry as it is a widely used semiconductor. The manufacturers often improve the properties of the semiconductor by adding phosphorus or boron. The great news is silicon is made from sand, which is the second most popularly found element after oxygen. Silica sand is a form of silicon dioxide from which silicon wafers are made. The first step for this is by melting the sand into a shape of a large cylinder called an ingot from where the thin wafers are sliced off. For microchips, good and pure silicon is always a mandatory material, hence only one impurity atom for every 10 million silicon atoms is allowed. Silicon balls are made in the range of different diameters where the most common sizes are 150, 200 and 300 mm wafers. Now, for microchips, the silicon wafers must be really thin. Hence, there is a special sawing technique where these wafers are made. Why is silicon used? Silicon is a semiconductor that is an efficient conductor of electricity provided certain conditions are fulfilled. Every silicon atom has four outermost electrons because of which actual pure monocrystalline silicon is non-conductive at room temperature. To make it conductive, small quantities of specific atoms are to be added as impurities to the wafer. This process is called doping, and most often boron and phosphorus atoms are highly used. The most suitable elements in these groups are very close to silicon on the periodic table and thus have very similar properties. The P and N conductive layers are very important, and the most important part of the chip is the transistors that are built on the P and N conductive layers. The wafer transistors are the smallest control units in microchips. Their job is to control electric voltages and currents. They are by far the most important components of electronic circuits, as every transistor on a chip contains P and N conductive layers. These layers are made of silicon crystals and they also have an additional layer of silicon oxide which acts as an insulator. A layer of electrically conductive polysilicon is coated on top of this. How are microchips made? Step 1. Layout and Design Microchips have to always be carefully designed as these are highly complex chips that are made up of billions of integrated and connected transistors that make up complex circuits such as microcontrollers and crypto chips. A few square millimeters have to be measured in size and carefully outlined. The actual number of microcomponents requires an in-depth design process that defines the chip's functions. This actually characterizes the chip's technical and physical properties. In fact, special design tools are used to draw up the plans for integrated circuits and construct a three-dimensional architecture of sandwich layers. This blueprint is transferred to photomasks to give the geometric images of the circuits. The photomasks are used as image templates during the subsequent chip fabrication process to make sure that the microscopic structures of a chip are reproduced perfectly. These are the patterns that you'd be seeing on the microchip. They have to be made in a dust-free environment with stable temperature and humidity levels. Step 2. Putting it together in a clean room. The chips have to be made in a clean room where no more than one particle of dust larger than 0.5 micrometers is allowed in around 10 liters of air. This place is extremely sophisticated with several million cubic meters of air being circulated every hour and hundreds of air volume regulators maintaining a constant airflow. The employees in these production areas have an extremely strict dress code. It is here that all the airlock chips are built on a base wafer that is cut from a silicon ingot depending on their size. Several dozen or several thousand chips can be made on one wafer because of their small size. The surface of the wafer is oxidized in a high temperature furnace at approximately 1000 degrees Celsius to create a non-conductive layer. After this, a photoresist material is uniformly distributed on this non-conductive layer. Then, centrifugal force is used on this coating and the process creates a light-sensitive layer. The wafer is then exposed to light through the photomask and special exposure machines called steppers. Here, coaster-sized areas of the chip are used to transfer the complex geometric patterns of the circuit design to the silicon wafer. The exposed area of the chip pattern is developed revealing the layer of oxide below. 
The unexposed part remains as it protects the layer of oxide. After this, the exposed layer of oxide is etched off in the areas that have been developed with plasma etching. In this process, special gases bond with the substrate to be removed in the reaction chamber. This enables the microscopic layers to be removed in the windows that were exposed and developed in the previous step. Once the photoresist residue has been stripped and after the wafer has been cleaned, it undergoes further oxidation. The polysilicon is then deposited on this insulation layer and then the photoresist is applied once again and the wafer is exposed to light through the mask. The exposed photoresist is stripped again and now the polysilicon and the thin oxide layer is etched off these two layers. Step 3. Doping process. This is the process where impure atoms are introduced into the exposed silicon and the ion implanter is used to include impurity inducing atoms into the silicon. This changes the conductivity of the exposed silicon by mere fractions of a micrometer. After the photoresisting residue has been stripped, another oxide layer is applied and the wafer undergoes another cycle of applying photoresist exposure through the mask. The stripping contact holes are etched to allow the conductive layers enabling the contacts and interconnections to be integrated into the wafer. This is done by depositing various metal alloys onto the wafer in the specialized machines. This increases the efficiency of the microchips. Step 4. Smooth finishing. The photoresist and the masks are applied such that the unexposed strips remain as is after the etching process. This provides a point of contact to the underlying layers to give the insulation layer a smooth finish. This requires a chemical mechanical process which is used to polish away excess material with micrometer accuracy. These individual steps may be done many times in the fabrication process until the integrated circuit is finally complete. Depending on the size and type of the chip, the wafer will now have several dozen to thousands of chips. The individual chips are usually sought out of the wafer and the chips are not lined up flush with each other on the wafer. This is because the tiny parts of the wafer splinter off during the sawing process. Hence, a certain amount of space known as the scribe line is always kept between the individual chips. There are structures also put in this scribe line to take the measurements immediately after production. This is to just find out if the chips are of sound quality. These specific structures are destroyed later during the sawing process and the size of the resulting chips typically varies between one square millimeter and a few square centimeters. Step 5. Assembly. The assembly is the stage where individual chips are placed on a package and the terminals are connected. The result is a finished semiconductor device that can be mounted on circuit boards employing the various types of terminals over many, many connections. There also would be ready-made semiconductor components and larger packages that are used for power-related activities. The semiconductors are made for many applications such as trains, electric cars, solar panels and wind turbines. These semiconductors are constructed to convert electrical currents of up to several hundred amps and voltages that go way into the thousands. The switching at this level leads to very high temperatures and this heat has to be dissipated through some cooling areas that are integrated into the packages. This is also an important aspect of semiconductors and has to be included during the manufacturing process. Quality checks for any device are extremely important. To check for the quality of such semiconductors, scanning electron microscopes are often used to repeatedly check the chips at different points in the production process. If we compare today's microelectronics with the breadth of human hair, we can see just how small these devices are, so the production process for this has to be highly specialized and perfect. Do you know anything more about how microchips are made? Have you ever seen a microchip? If so, where did you see it? Do you know more about its applications? Let us know in the comments section down below. While you're at it, don't forget to drop the video a like and remember to subscribe to How It's Made. Also, hit that bell icon on to turn on post notifications. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Stay safe science fanatics and we will see you real soon.